Hi everyone, in this video we will take a look at the idea of a simple grouping system and the Egyptian numeration system. So in the previous video we talked about tally systems and you can probably see the the convenience of using a system like that. It's very simple. Uh, we just have one single symbol, little marks to keep track of. But it, the, the bad thing about it is that we only have one symbol to use, right? It's a, an advantage and a disadvantage. So if you needed to record a number like 2,000, you'd have to write 2,000 different tally marks, and that's quite time consuming. So a simple grouping system developed as a way to improve on this idea of keeping track of larger uh, numbers of things. In a simple grouping system, there are symbols that represent select numbers, not just a single symbol like a tally. Often these numbers are powers of 10. It's kind of natural for us to count by tens. We have 10 fingers, we have 10 toes. That may be one reason we chose the number 10. So here's a made up example. This, this is not a historical numeration system, but it does illustrate how a simple grouping system works. So let's say that the symbol, okay, this is the symbol delta, represents the quantity 10. And let's say that this symbol this is gamma, represents the quantity 1. Write the numeral representing the quantity 64 in this system. So in a simple grouping system, we just write those symbols over and over as many times as needed to represent the quantity. So 64, 60 is 6 tens, so I would write the symbol for 10 6 times. And then 4, I need 4 ones to represent that, so we would write gamma 4 times. Now the interesting thing about this system is that it doesn't really matter what order these symbols go in. Um, typically it would have been written from left to right, from largest to smallest, but we could still understand what this meant um, if we had moved some of these symbols around. So let's say I write these ones at the beginning, then in a simple grouping system we're just adding everything. That's how we determine the quantity of the numeral. So I would be adding and I would still add 1 plus 1 plus six tens, okay, all those tens, and then two ones at the end. And I'm still going to end up with the quantity 64. So it's a little bit different than our numeration system. Here's a historical example. This is the Egyptian numeration system. And they used a system of hieroglyphs. And this is a figure from your textbook. So you can see we have symbols for 1, for 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and then finally, this is my favorite, an astonished person for 1 million, I suppose, because that was a very large quantity. Alright, so same idea, if we wanted to represent numerals, we would use these symbols and just re repeat them over and over as many times as needed. Alright, so if we look at example 1, find the numerical value of each Egyptian numeral. So in part A, I would just count up this, how many symbols and the value of each one. Alright, so first we have a fish which represents 100,000 and I have three of those, so that's 100,000 plus 100,000 plus 100,000 okay, 300,000 and then next we have three pointing fingers those each represent 10,000 Right, two scrolls, which each represent 100. Three heel bones, which represent 10 each, so that's 30. And then finally, six vertical staffs, which each represent one, so this would be six. Okay, and then combining all of that together, that would be 310,236. Now notice another thing that's different than our numeration system. We use a zero to show that we have a missing place value, or in this case, that there are no thousands. Uh, in their system, they used a lotus flower to represent thousands, but they didn't actually need a zero. If there were no thousands, they just wouldn't use that symbol. So you don't see any lotus flowers in the numeral in part A, so there are no thousands in that number. Okay, how about part B? Same thing, go through when we find the value for each symbol. So the astonished person is 1 million. Okay, then we have two pointing fingers, which are each 10,000. 
We do have lotus flowers this time. They're a thousand each. All right, one scroll is a hundred, one heel bone is ten, and three vertical staves is three. So this is one million twenty two thousand one hundred thirteen. Okay, so let's try going the other direction. Let's write each number as an Egyptian numeral. So 237. Okay, so two hundreds would be two scrolls. Okay, three vertical, or uh, three heel bones to represent 30. And then seven vertical staffs. And again, these don't have to be written all out in a line, so you can stack these if you run out of room like that. All right, and then the second number, 3,202,419. So we need three astonished persons. Okay. I guess I should make his arms a little taller to seem more astonished. All right, and then two... 100,000, so that would be two fish. Okay, you can practice your drawing skills on this one. Uh, next we have 2,000, so that would be two lotus flowers. All right, and then 400, so that would be four scrolls. And then we have 10, which is one heel bone, and then nine vertical staffs. Okay, and this is not the tally system, so they would not have crossed the staffs when they got to five. They would just have written them all out like that. All right, so I think you can probably see some advantages over the tally system. Uh, we certainly would not want to write three million some tallies to represent this numeral. But you can probably also see a disadvantage compared to the, the numeration system we use. Um, first of all, notice how many characters we had to use to write this number. And then second, it's a bit difficult to write these characters, uh, at least for us. And perhaps for the Egyptians, it wouldn't have been that difficult. We can also do addition and subtraction in the, Egy the Egyptian system. All right, so to add, we would do this similarly to how we would add with our numerals. And let's start with the ones, and we'll add from right to left. All right, so if you count up the vertical staves, we have 11 of those. And they also grouped by tens. So as soon as they have 10, they would write a heel bone instead of a vertical staff. So I'm going to exchange 10 of those staves for a heel bone, and that leaves me with one staff left over. All right, and then moving on to the heel bones that we originally had. All right, we have five plus seven, okay, which would be 12. And I'm going to exchange 10 of those. So 10 heel bones makes one scroll. And then I would have two left over. And then of course, plus the one that I already had previously. All right, and then finally we have the scrolls to add. So we have three scrolls, so I would add on three more scrolls. Okay, so we have four scrolls, three heel bones, and one vertical staff. That's the final uh, answer. Subtraction in the Egyptian system. Now I'd like to see if you can do this without converting over to our numbers. So you probably will be thinking about them in the back of your head, and that's fine, but at least show your work using Egyptian numerals so you can get a feel for um, how easy or how tedious this may have been. All right, so we'll start from the right and subtract uh, the vertical staves first. So we have 2 minus 4, which is not possible, so we need to exchange just as we would do with our numbers. So we can take one heel bone and convert that into 10 vertical staffs. All right, so now I'm subtracting 
12 vertical stabs minus 4, and that would give me 8 vertical stabs. Okay, um, next we would move on to the heel bones, and we have 1 minus 3, so I need to exchange again. And 1 scroll equals 100, so that would equal 10 heel bones. So I would exchange 1 scroll for 10 heel bones. Alright, so now the problem is 11 heel bones minus 3 heel bones, and that would be 8 heel bones. Alright, and then finally we would subtract the scrolls. I have 3 minus 2, which would be 1 scroll. Alright. Alright, now one tip for doing these types of problems. Um, make sure that you are exchanging the correct things. So for example, let's say that um, let's say that we had had uh, lotus flowers instead of scrolls. So these are all lotus flowers. Okay. Now they're worth a thousand, so when you go to uh, subtract the heel bones and when you need to to exchange, right, when you take one lotus flower and convert it, it doesn't become ten heel bones, it would become 10 scrolls first, and then you could take a scroll and turn it into heel bones. So I've given you a homework problem, and there are some practice problems in the book as well. You can try this and see how it would work. Um, if you need to, maybe do the problem on the side in our numbers first, and then try to do it using uh, the Egyptian symbols. All right, so that's a brief look at how the Egyptian numeration system works, as well as simple grouping. In the next video, we will talk about multiplicative grouping systems and see a historical example of those.